There are 14 players from the state of New York on this Lemoyne squad. Nine of them have played high school in Onondaga County. And talking to Coach Bonus about that yesterday, it's all about just keeping an eye on these guys throughout their high school careers. It's so important to just keep the connections, tell them about how great of an education Lemoyne is. And Bonus knows that. I mean, he's been at the helm for, what, 22 seasons. I think he's learned a thing or two about college recruiting. Absolutely. You get into those local kids, the local kids tend to gel. A little better and this Lions squad GCU they are the complete opposite they're a younger team but also a lot of international players on their roster so you have people come coming from a bunch of different backgrounds which once you optimize that that is fantastic but it takes a while to get to know each other and get that get that chemistry going because you're coming from all different backgrounds and you all learn the game of soccer a different way coming from all over Europe. It makes you think, you know, you're talking about the international players. Lemoyne has 14 New Yorkers. The remaining 10 on the Dolphin squad come from outside of the United States. So it's either, it's two options for Lemoyne this season. You either play from New York or you come from outside the States. Almost 15 minutes through this first half. Still no score between Lemoyne and Georgia Court. Georgian Court, excuse me. Lions finished last year at 10-5-3, and 7-3-1 and one in CACC play. They went 6-1-2 and two on the road last season as well. Across and inside the box, that's blocked away. Now it's up to the Lions to clear, and they do just that. Francisco Corral getting it out of the box, and now Lemoyne has to retreat with its back line. Yeah, good, Rich. Another cross there. That one a little better, just not able to get through, put it on the ground, tried to find, but the center back for GCU able to cut that out. Van Duin sending it out live, about wide, excuse me, but the ball was a little too long for Goodrich. Leads to a lion throw with the captain, Jay Abraham, will throw it in on the left side. We talk about Abraham. He's the team captain here. He's a right back. That's a little unusual to have a team captain at right back. Usually you're going to want your captains in the center of the field so they're able to direct both sides of the field but he's on the outside there so the guys on the left side of the field aren't really used to his leadership unless it's in practice never really thought of that before right back never being as a captain you normally put him in certain spots but i guess if you show the leadership you earn it even if you're a right or a left back wherever you are on the pitch right yeah absolutely if you're a good leader you're a good leader and that's what coach thought and Puts him at captain, and hopefully it'll start the gel for GCU. Were you, leadership were you a captain where you played junior college? I was not. I was put my second year. I was going to be team captain, and then our season got postponed. Never able to get that last season in. Dolphins the same way in 2020. They did not play a season in the NE10. Speaking of the Dolphins, they're working in the attacking third now. Lantry sends it inside the box, headed away, but kept inside. Still something brewing here for Lemoyne. Now poked outside of the 18. Taylor to Chrysler Howard. Great footwork over on the right side. Across coming in. Another one cleared by the Lions. We're seeing more offensive presence from Lemoyne. It's just not finding a Dolphin body inside the box. Yeah, that one had plenty of time on that right wing there. All the time in the world. Just not a great cross in the end. Got to clean that up. But as the game progresses, they'll get sharper. They'll get better throughout this game. Glimmick sends it over to Taylor. And now around midfield, looking for Chrysler Howard. He's been trying to get involved all match through the 16 minutes that we've been at it. But Chrysler Howard has been finding those touches, but immediately hounded by the Georgian court defense. It seems like the Lions have come ready to play, and they know who exactly they want to go after. It's the Canadian midfielder. Yeah, and GCU's coming out playing a little like Lemoyne, having that high press. But the press is starting about at half field, whereas Lemoyne's been pressing up to the 18 or even the goalie throughout this game. And that's something that Coach Bonus wants to endure with his team. It's something about being all in. One of the seven values that Lemoyne has been pushing this season, and one of the ways to be all in is if you have your attacking mids and your strikers playing the defense and setting something up more on those counterattacks. Yeah, and that's kind of part of the reason maybe they've only scored they've scored one goal in each of their, their two games. And now here's something brewing for the Lions. Out on the left side, Matthias Mattersbacher. He sends one in. It's wide to the right. 
Great opportunity there for Georgian Court Lions. Just coming up a little unlucky there, but you got to give some credit. Finally, some offensive work from the Lions. Oh, absolutely. Got a beautiful step over there. Cut back, created some space, and sent that one just wide and over. That could have been a screamer there. That one bending back towards the net just didn't bend enough to go in the net. You mentioned the one goal just a couple of minutes ago on August 28th, the 1 0 win for Lemoyne against Jefferson. Before that, on Thursday the 25th, it was Lemoyne that took down Caldwell for the second straight season opener. This time, 1 0. You hear the nils, that means two clean sheets for Josh Marr and company. Obviously, you want to make a third clean sheet, right? Absolutely, and that's <laughs> how you get your confidence up. A through ball out wide. Here's the captain, Abraham. He puts on a shot and he scores. We'll talk about the right back and the captain taking advantage. It's Georgian Court that strikes first. Just beautiful one-two play right there outside the 18, then through in the Abraham. Just slots it right by, right as we are talking about Lemoyne not conceding all season long. They concede here. And Abraham came out of nowhere. Did you see him come up out on that right wing? It seems like it was all force with the Lions, with the back line more, more in particular. Yeah, I don't think even the Lemoyne left back saw him come through. He wasn't expecting it. He's already dealing with the three forwards on GCU. He's not expecting the right back of all people to come up. And, I mean, Abraham wide open there. Great touch and able, very composed finish there. Just slotted it right by the goalie near post and as a goalkeeper that's the one spot you don't want to concede is that near post to Meyer gonna have to bounce back from that one even though it was a great finish you really want to make sure that if the other team's going to finish you want to make sure that they have to go far post that was Georgian Court's first scored goal since August 26 Friday August 26 was when the Lions had their senior day. They fell 3-2 to Gannon University. Yeah, and it's 